Hello everyone. If you want to buy a Lenovo ThinkPad laptop, you often have to pay a premium when compared to equally equipped laptops from other manufacturers. So the question arises, what do you really get for that premium? In this video I will try to answer that question from a professional software developer's perspective. In order to do that, I will do a deep dig into the Lenovo ThinkPad product series as there is a lot to find. Specifically, I will look at the Lenovo ThinkPad T14, which I bought the generation 1 in September of 2020, from my own money. So there is no sponsoring involved. I will point out some advantages I found noteworthy in the ThinkPad lineup especially the T14. I will explain why I decided myself for the T14 instead of the T14S. I look into the Lenovo Vantage software and in the rich Lenovo support. And then I will open it so you can look into it yourself. And also I will point out some drawbacks which I had with my, pers my personal unit. So, why did I buy the Lenovo T14 instead of the T14S? In order to answer that, let's, let's look at the product specifications. First, let's look at the Lenovo ThinkPad T-Series website. You will see that the Lenovo T14 is a little bit cheaper than the T14S. And that despite the fact that its, its housing is similarly almost the same, it's not quite the same. But for me, more important is the keyboard. It has to be a good keyboard and uh, in both cases, it's, it's the same type of keyboard. Let's look at the T14 technical specifications and I point out what the difference are, are in comparison to the T14S. So the processors are basically the same, operating system is the same, display options are the same. I, I have got the uh, Full HD low power consumption version which provide 400 nits, which I find very good. But the reason why I got the T14 is it supports up to 48 gigabytes of memory. I need as much memory as I can get. If I could, I would get the 64 gigabytes version, but there is none. <laughs> the uh, T14S supports only up to 32 gigabytes of memory. One disadvantage is the battery lifetime. It's a little bit smaller. Storage is the same, graphics are the same. Uh, another disadvantage is it's slightly bigger, it's in the millimeters, it's slightly bigger and it weighs 190 grams more. The ports and the slots are basically the same, USB-C Thunderbolt 4 connection, but it has a RJ45 jack, so if you are working like I am, if you are not using uh, the Wi-Fi that much and you want to use your LAN cable, so you have a port for this. The T14S has none in the T14S. You have to use the docking station or you have to use the Wi-Fi. By the way, the 32 gigabytes of memory limit was also the reason why I did not get the T14 with the AMD processors. Now let's look at some noteworthy remarks about the hardware and the peripherals. I find the keyboard in general very good in both layout and how the keystrokes feel. But there's an unusual quirk in a lot of Lenovo ThinkPad laptops and this is that the FN and the control keys are in unusual order. I'll show you later on how you can swap them. There are dedicated keys for page up, page down, home and insert and delete. I find this very very important as a professional software developer. Also the function keys are arranged in groups of four which makes them very easy to find without looking. The webcam has a closable lid and the touchpad is very large I would say it's apple sized touchpad. Uh, it also supports multi-touch. There is a fingerprint reader which enables Windows Hello and makes it easier to log in into Windows. A lot of Cheaper laptops and budget laptops come with a lot of bloatware. Fortunately, Lenovo does not do that. I think they were, there were one or two software packages which I immediately uninstalled. You also get the Lenovo Vantage software. One could argue this is kind of a bloatware, but it also has some helpful functions. For example, 
you get information about your device, serial number, product number, BIOS version and also processor memory and so on. Then you get information about your power settings, especially the battery detail information. So this is the 51 watt hours battery. It shows also the measured full charge capacity. Perhaps you're asking yourself, why is it only charged up to 79%? Reason for that is that if you're using your laptop most of the time with AC attached, this would shorten the lifespan of the battery. So in order to prevent that, you can activate the battery charge threshold to something below 100%. I have set it to 80%. This maintains the battery in a way that makes the battery lifespan longer. On the device and input, input and accessories, you can find some useful information. For example, here's a map of hidden keyboard functions. So you can see when pressing the function key and the four key, you can put the computer into sleep mode. Or when you press function and space, you can switch on the keyboard backlight. Then you have the possibility to switch the default function of the top row of the keyboard. I have switched it behave like the default F1 through F12 keys but you can switch it to the special functions. All down here you can swap the function and the control key by switching it here. Also you get information about your warranty. The T14 product series gets three years of depot support, which means uh, it includes parts and labor. Uh, repairs have to be done by shipment into to the Lenovo depot. Also you get information about system updates and driver updates. So when Lenovo publishes updates, you can see them here and also the laptop would automatically install them. Lenovo provides a very rich support for its laptops. There is a very large knowledge base and support articles and maintenance handbooks and so on. For that you need the product number or your serial number, both of which you can find out in the Lenovo Vantage software by clicking on device and then you have it up here. With your product number or your serial number, you can go into the Lenovo support database on their web page. There you have to click on PC support, paste in your product number. And this brings you to your product support. There are a lot of troubleshooting guides, driver software, diagnostics, knowledge base articles. I want to point out some noteworthy articles and guides. For example, there's a whole video gallery with gems like my, why is my computer slow or how to care for your Lenovo computer, but there are more serious videos like how to sanitize your Lenovo PC or also very funny, <laughs> you have to look into it, battery life and how it affects you. Yes. On a more serious side of things, there's also the knowledge base where you can find good articles, for example, recommended ways how to enter your BIOS, including also videos and also a guide how to do it with screenshots and pictures. There's also an article how to swap the function and the control key, but I already showed you how to do it with the Lenovo Vantage software. But there was already one time I really needed the knowledge base of Lenovo. And this was in October of 2020 when I updated Windows to the 20H2 update. And after that I got, after the reboot, the Windows Blue Screen of Death. Windows BSOD and there already was very quickly a knowledge base article in here which provided a resolution for this issue which was back then to disable the enhanced Windows biometric security setting in the BIOS. So this definitely helped me out very fast and uh, was very fortunate. Most notably aside of the knowledge base articles I find the user guides and in there specifically the hardware maintenance manual. It shows it has instructions, detailed instructions for a lot of tasks you probably want to do and also a lot of information around this for example general safety, electrical safety and so on. There are detailed strategies for how to replace for example a solid state drive. There is information about how to restore or reset your windows there are descriptions of locations of different parts of the computer and also instructions how to 
remove or re replace some of our rules, starting with general guidelines and tips what to do before servicing the computer, for example, disabling the built-in battery and uh, removing the SIM card. Then you have instructions, for example, how to remove or change the keyboard, remove the base cover assembly, change the solid state drive, memory modules, speakers and so on and so on. So basically you can tear the whole machine down and replace a lot of parts if you have to replace them if they are damaged or something. Next let's look inside it and see for ourselves what we can find in there. So now let's look what we see here. First, of course, it's the battery. You see this one, this is the 51 watt hours. But interestingly, there is a typical capacity and a rated capacity stated, which is 49 watt hours. We have seen before in the Lenovo Vantage software that the measured total capacity of the battery was in fact 43.99 watt hours. There are of course screws everywhere, so you can change the battery, it's a lithium ion battery. There is the memory module slot where I have built in a 32 gigabytes module. There's also the 4G module which you can remove or replace. There's the solid state drive M2 SSD. This is the one terabyte version. Also you see the, the fan so you can remove dust. Basically you see a lot of interesting things, there's the cell battery. You can basically remove everything or replace everything. And in fact, I have had to do that on my older Lenovo T430. I had to replace the mainboard after I spilled half a liter water on it. Uh, and this was basically no problem. You, you go into a Lenovo shop, which does maintenance and uh, you, you pay I think it was about 200 euros. So you got a new mainboard and uh, they built it into it and uh, I could use the other parts like the battery, the SD card, uh, memory, display, keyboard, everything I could continue using. So this was very comfortable. So let's close it up again. to round up this video I also want to give you some personal experiences. Um, I had some minor minus po points, some drawbacks. First the backlight of the keyboard is not evenly distributed, means that the number 9 key is very much brighter than every other key. Then I had the, the issue that the key for the letter U did occasionally get stuck but this was easy to solve. I only have to put it off and uh, below it there was a little piece of dirt I think it's in the production process it got in there and was glued in there after removing the, this piece of dirt it functions perfectly and the last issue is that there is sometimes a rattle if I try to put the laptop into a horizontal laptop holder yes but uh, comes and it goes. I don't know if it comes from the fan or where does it come from, but I hope it does not break with this. So now I hope I could give you some information about which value you get when paying the premium on a Lenovo ThinkPad laptop. What do you think? Is it worth for you? Thank you for watching. If you like this video, please subscribe and leave a like. 
If you want to learn more or have questions about the laptop, feel free to write me in the comments below. I plan to do more reviews, deep dives and guides in the future. My content aims to help and educate the passionate and privacy aware user. I look forward to present you some more videos soon. That's all for now. See you soon. Bye bye.